Hey, man, I was really just, this was just a filler title because I'm testing my connection out. But if you want to hear me talk about my tier list, I can. Um, might not be the most intuitive. Well, let me see if I can make it intuitive for as long as you're willing to stay. And if you want to leave, I can't make you stay and I wouldn't blame you. Number one is Sayaka. Just point blank simple. Number one is Sayaka. Now, if you still want to say, if you still want to stay after I said that, then thank you because most people tend to leave after I mention Sayaka as my favorite character. She's not my favorite character because of her appearance. She's not my favorite character because of any shipping shit. Though if you ship her or like her appearance, I don't begrudge you for that. She's my favorite character because of how she is written, which is not only to me the best in Danganronpa, but to me she is the best written character in all of fiction that I've seen, of course. I also know I look terrible. I also know that my screen for some reason isn't as it should be. It's only like a small corner of the whole screen. I need to fix this shit. But um, beside the point, I'm assuming you're here for content. So I'll switch to the content mode. Now, Sayaka is the best written character to me in terms of fiction. Because when I first did an analysis of her character, it was about the second time I played through the game. The second time I played through the game was the second time I played through the entire game, not counting the anime. When you look at her in the anime, there is nothing that's really there compared to the other big hitters. Kirigiri, Biyakuya, some might say Celeste. It's not until you get through the game, well, well it's really just one chapter. <laughs> uh, I should say spoilers, but if you're going to, <laughs> anybody is looking at this and they're going to, Come in and, and look at my tier list. I'm assuming that they know what they're getting into. She's not past one chapter for obvious reasons. But in that chapter alone, there was a lot of death in her that you don't get in the entire, well, I think it's two episodes of the anime, the animation, which is a shame because a lot of other characters get their due. Now, I'm outside in the garage because I tend to do my videos outside because I like the air even though climate change is making it a bitch right now to do my videos because I'm getting hot as shit as usual now. So if you hear any noise, like the garbage trucks or whatever, I'm sorry about that. But as I was saying, Sayaka in the game has a lot more death than pretty much any character I've seen in fiction. As, and as a matter of fact, she helped me to create my own type of charting for death. When I was thinking about how to write, uh, not write characters, but analyze characters, I wanted to do so objectively. And what that meant is I wanted to do so in a way that I could say, I think this character is a better written character than another character. Or I think this character is the best written character in any set of characters. And you can't say I'm wrong because to say I'm wrong would be to say I'm wrong subjectively if I'm looking at it objectively. Now you can have different objective criteria, but these criteria I have that derive from an analyzing Sayaka's character, they've never been surpassed. I've never had anybody say I'm wrong or be able to out argue me, out debate me when I bring out those criteria. I do videos on YouTube and those videos are called lives. And so I'm basically, whether it's on the keyboard and chatting like in real time, or I'm talking to somebody over the phone or whatever, I debate them on pretty much anything that they want to debate me on. As far as Sayaka goes, or really anything Danganronpa, I have never lost a debate. If you want to see my uh, stuff, it's Rebel of Danu. It's like my name, except it's D-A. Is it T-H-E or D-A? It's Rebel of D-A Nu. And... I have a lot of Dogma for content there on my gaming channel. Sayaka, when I was looking at her character and I decided to do an analysis of her character about, I see, at this, it was 2016. So at this point, it was five years ago, 2019, 18, 17, 16. Yeah, about five years ago, five or six years ago. 
I wasn't sure how to analyze characters without being subjective. And subjective doesn't mean what a lot of people think it means. Subjective means that you are putting your own your own biases into it. Now, what that means in terms of objectivity is you can look at something that is not factual and still be objective about it. You can look at something that does not have an absolute truth and you can still look at it objectively. For example, if I say that Saika has the best design in Danganronpa, I can say that objectively speaking, even though best is per se a subjective word. Why could I say that objectively speaking? Well, because I can put some quantifiable criteria to that. Now, case in point, I have quantifiable criteria for her character as a sub. Man, I should have probably recorded this. I'm actually about to go on a tangent. I should have locally recorded this, but it says I haven't dropped any frames, so that's good. Um, I have some quantifiable metrics for her character that I've measured. And as a matter of fact, I can talk about this in general. When I talk about character in terms of how well they're written, I'm talking about character death. Character death is, to me, the foundation of writing. You cannot write a good narrative without having good characters, in my opinion. That is a subjective opinion. But an objective way to look at it, in my opinion, is that an objective opinion for me would also be that characters who are written with more depth, more complexity, that's done well, of course, will enhance the narrative. A narrative that has fewer characters compared to that same narrative that has more characters and the characters are done well, and the characters are done with well-written complexity, that's always going to be better. Just my opinion, but I have to look at that objectively too. Now, when I'm talking about Sayaka or any other character, I always measure their death in terms of this. I measure their death. In, <laughs> I've been talking so long, I forgot to get the fucking image. Um, I measure their, their death in terms of primarily, well, three things, but primarily the one I use the most is something I call layers of development. And I should have this in my notes so I can pull it out verbatim and explain it to you much simpler. Layers of development. So I have a document here called Immersive Writing. My layers of development, I mean this. Well, first, before I even go into the layers of development, let me talk about death versus development. Because a lot of people, especially a lot of these freaking anime YouTubers who do so-called analyses that are 15 minutes because the algorithm wants them to be about 15 minutes and they need to get their views as, to, as opposed to being genuine. They BS. I'm not going to do that. In terms of death versus development. Death, and, and this is true. <laughs> it's not just me making stuff up. This is true. I just noted it down. Death is also including development, but it's also including something, and this is what I termed it, factoids. Death is, therefore, development and factoids. Death is anything written in a character's role in a narrative, that character per se, the character as itself, that makes the character more complex. Okay? And I'm going to get to Saika. There is a point to this. Uh, I might even compare with the other ones, too, the other characters. But death is anything that makes a, char a character more complex. That's development and factoids. Now, what is development and what is factoids? Well, development... That is a term that regards things that are higher death. And factoids, that's something that regards lower death. Uh, development is needed to influence character decisions, personality-wise. They're decisions in the narrative that affect how they flow throughout the narrative and how the narrative flows through them. Factoids, on the other hand, is just some extra static stuff, like inf information about a character, wherein the characters don't develop. The characters might develop in your eyes, but they, in their in their point of view, they don't develop. For example, the 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 natural one I always use that I got from doing a live with a guy over Yu Hakusho. You might not know Yu Hakusho, but Yu Hakusho is uh, my favorite shonen, my favorite, well, my second favorite now anime. There's a bit bad character in there called Tagoro, and Tagoro, all you need to really know about this, whether you know about Yu Hakusho or not. Um, because I'm not going to go too much into it. I'm not going to go off on a tangent. But Tagoro, he preferred his, in one scene, one scene, he preferred his orange juice over ice. Now, the guy I was laughing with said that made his character much deeper because now we know something extra about his character. Well, unfortunately, and he lost that, but unfortunately, that is a factoid because 
that is something, first of all, that he already knew. He already knew that he preferred his orange juice over ice, right? That did, that didn't develop him. That didn't give him any more death in terms of what he already had going for his character. In terms of what we saw, what we found out about his character, yes, in our eyes, it gave him more death. But intrinsically speaking, per the character himself, he already preferred that. So he didn't change. He didn't grow. He didn't move on from what he already was at the start. So in other words, he, that's a static fact. Second of all, it's not even really a fact because we don't know whether or not he preferred orange juice over ice in that one scene for any myriad of reasons that I could go into, but that would maybe involve spoilers in case you haven't seen it. But all that is to say is that... Um, I would say something about subscribing, but I don't even... Fuck plugging, man. Fuck plugging and trying to get money and shit. All that is to say is that the factoids is for one, it's extra, it's extraneous, it's supplementary. And two, it's static. That means that it does not contribute to a character's roundedness. It does not contribute to a character's growth. The development, however, does influence their growth. It does influence their decisions, their progression throughout the narrative. Sorry, I need to take some water real fast. Now, what does it have to do with Danganronpa? Well, let's, let's give an example. If we're talking about a development range, right, for Sayaka, let's think about, and I'm just feeling myself now because no one's going to be talking about this shit. No one who plays Danganronpa <laughs> talks about any of this shit, man. But development, let's look at a development range for Sayaka. We have, and this is very simplifying for characters. She's not my number one character of all time for nothing. But we have that she uh, goes from being a lonely child to being an idol. That is the development range, right? She changes over the course of the narrative from being something to being something else, from being a lonely child to being an idol or to, to becoming an idol. The whole process of her becoming an idol, not just simply her being an idol in the end, but the whole journey wherein she becomes the idol, whereby rather she becomes the idol, that is the entire development range, at least for that part of her character. A factoid, on the other hand, would be that she's not good at small talk, which is something that you, where the rest of my cough drops, which is something that you find out as Makoto when you are talking to her in one of her free, was it a free time event? I'm not sure whether it was a free time event or not. I'm sorry. It's been a long time since I actually played Don Karampa, but I believe it was a free time event. She talked about not being good at making small talk. Um... And the reason that the development is more important is because that influences how, well, she changes into what she becomes over the narrative. Now, I said that there were three types of character development. Three types of character development. <laughs> the first is the one I really use. This is why I never lose. This is my objective measurement for character development. That is character layers slash character tiers. You can call these tiers of development. You can call them tiers of, of character death, whatever you want to call them. This is the objective metric for measuring character development, uh, character death. And this is what I found out while analyzing Sayaka's, char uh, Sayaka's character in, all the way back in 2016. Looking for a way to get my point across in an objective fashion. Looking for a way to be more credible. Looking for a way to maybe have a a thesis on my hands, get a master's with this. I didn't end up majoring in English, but um, for graduate stuff, I did some other stuff. I don't want to talk too much about real life, but hey, I could have wrote with my thesis that I should drop in the a, in a chat. With my thesis being a, over 200 pages, almost 300 pages, I believe, I could have probably done that shit for, post, uh, for graduate studies. <laughs> so uh, let's get to it. What is the layers of development? The layers of character development or character death, that's the different amounts of unrelated boundaries of development a character has. So this is what gives a character roundness. So what does that mean? In layman's terms, it means how many different ways can I talk about a character's personality that aren't derivative of the other rays? If I still need to um, explain that, I'll go ahead and do that. 
let's look at it for this. Uh, let's look at it for, um, for example, with Sayaka. Sayaka, she has, well, she has more than five layers of development. But we're just name five. You'll notice that when I name these five layers of development, man, they do not coincide with one another or i shouldn't say coincide they are not derived from not from one another they don't come from one another they are not intricately related right one is not a subset of the other one uh so let's look at just five for example one you would have um let me see you got her entire backstory her entire backstory is only one layer of development and one thing you're going to see and a lot of fiction, or you've already seen, uh, I haven't actually probably seen as much fiction as you have. I don't really read much at all, <laughs> let alone watch. But one thing you'll see, or you've already seen, is that the backstory for most characters in fiction is just one layer of development. Most characters in fiction don't have more than two or three layers of development. They just don't. Because most of their elements, most of Anything that makes up a character's personality or actions throughout a narrative are from one source. They're derived from one specific source. Now, that source can branch off into different things that the character undergoes, that the character thinks, that the character feels and says, but it's still derived from one source. So her entire backstory, everything that she went through from being with just her dad to being uh, lonely, uh, at school to uh, be well this is the awkwardness with small talk thing right to having too much free time on her hands to wanting to be an idol right and her desire to help others help other children who might have felt as lonely as her and also her cynicism which is another aspect of her character i'm sort of bouncing around all over the place so please excuse me but cynicism as well she is a very cynical individual. She has a, an innate, I won't say an innate, but a long-bred dis, uh, distrust in people because of what happened in her backstory, which isn't just that she was at home alone waiting for her dad to get home. Sorry, my, my throat gets very dry very easily. That's why I'm not successful. But it's also, it's also something to do with in her backstory, her going and auditioning to become the idol that she eventually became, that entire process, which is, it's not an easy process. Becoming an idol, excuse me, becoming an idol, if you know in real life, it's, it's not an easy process. It's, it's a very hard process. And this is someone who not only became an idol, but she became the top idol in the world. This is someone who I believe Komaru says in the Despair Girls, the Ultra Despair Girls, uh, another episode, Danganronpa, that she has 100 million hardcore fans, 100 million Sayaka, which is more hardcore fans than any celebrity in this world has on Twitter following. So like, like just casual followers. Sayaka has more hardcore diehard fans by orders of magnitude more than Biden or Trump have combined on Twitter. And obviously, you don't get to that point in your career <laughs> like, like anybody else ever has. But you, you theoretically wouldn't get to that point in your career on a whim, right, on a humbug. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication. And what she said also to Makoto is that this made her do some, quote, unquote, things that she is not proud of. Some bad things that she is not proud of. That leads to a lot of cynicism that we see into uh the story now that cynicism regarding the idol role regarding what she has to do with being an idol if i were to say that she also has a trust in makoto despite her her um her bad upbringing but despite her bad upbringing despite her being uh forced to compete against so many other people and dethrone them she's able to find salvation in this one guy that would not be related to her backstory because her trust in makoto is something that sprung about because of some side event 
that happened at like at a school club, something that happened with uh I can't believe I forgot the name of that freaking bird. Uh, damn, that's how long it's been since I played the game. I got the thesis up like right in another tab. I could pull it up, but it might slow down my frames. But she she saved some kind of uh, he saved some kind of bird from like the school pool. And when he I can't believe I forgot the name of that bird. And when he <laughs> saved the bird, Saika, who was still very cynical at that point, lost her cynicism for this one individual person. And so everything that revolves around her idol career is separate from Makoto insofar as this is concerned. So these are two different layers of development. And what goes on with Ko uh, Makoto and then what goes on with her idol stuff, they both influence her actions later in the game, but they're two completely different things on their own. You also have uh, her feelings of, of guilt for the bad that she did to get there. That ties with ravering about Mondo. When you talk about um, the bad that she did to get to where she is right now, where she is, it's like a top idol. That is part of her backstory, yes, but that's also, what's the best way to explain it without going over her entire backstory? When she, when she became um, the cynical type of person, that is not directly her backstory. That is something that branched off after her backstory. Let's look at it this way. Say you are applying for a job at McDonald's, right? You apply for a job at McDonald's and then why, why do I choose McDonald's or whatever? You apply for a job at McDonald's and you, and you are loving the application. But then you get to like, I don't know, like uh, your first day on a job, right? And then while you're on your trials on a job, like your, your trial period, you see somebody who is just acting like a total an asshole. And it turns out they're a regular customer there and they're an asshole to you specifically. This is going to change your perception of what you had thought was originally a good thing. So Sayaka's backstory did lead into the cynicism, but it's different from what she actually had to go through, like the, the feelings of guilt that she, that she derived from uh, having to get to the top because she never expected it to be as well down trying to climb up as it became she never expected it to be the type of dog eat dog world that it was and she came into that wanting to help others and she hurt others along the way so this is three different things another one you could say uh well i'll just skip to later on she fears losing relevance she fears losing her time and this is not only just about not wanting to be left behind in terms of the auto industry, but a lot of different things. Time to spend with her family, time to spend with her friends, time to spend with her own life, like living her own life. And she was worried that she was going to die. That is a number four, because that, even though that seems like a very mundane concern in terms of character development, that was something that she was actively worried about and voicing as a concern leading up to her deciding to frame Makoto. And then one more thing, one more layer of development I can just go ahead and throw out there. And that could be, uh, I don't know, her deciding to work with her classmates. Because it's sort of a subtle thing, but when you first see her, I wonder if I can actually pull this up. But when you first see her interacting with the rest of the class, like in the gymnasium, she is initially unwilling to. She has reservations about it. And as a matter of fact, I'm not even sure I have to pull it up because, excuse me, when she is with Makoto right after that, actually, I remember the scene specifically, is when Makoto gets his ass knocked out by Mondo, Mondo's stupid self, and then Sayaka carries him to his room. Saika carries Makoto by herself to his room. And what happens is when Mondo, uh, not Mondo, when Makoto comes to, Saika tells Makoto that you saved me. I was, I was lost. I had no hope. I didn't think that it was going to be possible to work in this environment, but you've given me light. You've given me hope. 
I think that's like the first time that's actually come up in a narrative is when Sayaka says it. And in giving me hope, I want to work as your assistant. I want to be your ultimate assistant and try to work with the others to get out of here. Whereas before she was so cynical about that and worried about dying herself that she was unwilling to, the two together, that she was unwilling to work with the others. Matter of fact, there's one scene where Byakuya calls out that, uh, I wonder if I can pull it up just to be a little more clear. I do have the Danganronpa Saika analysis here. Depending on how fast Chrome opens it, I can just go ahead and say, okay, Chrome has opened it up. So I wonder, how do I share my screen? Yakuya, blah, 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 Mondo. Okay, so yeah, let me go ahead and make this shared so you can see it. I hope. Edit. No, it's not. It is main screen share. Share the analysis. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to share this next. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm sharing it. Wow, that actually worked. It says I have one slow frame, but hopefully that doesn't really impact the actor. Because I'm trying to make sure I can eventually stream full time. Well, not full time, but more than like an hour at a time. And speaking of which, it says my battery's only got 44 minutes left. So I'll try to talk about this fast as I can. Let's zoom this in a little bit. And let's talk about Biakia real fast. Uh, yeah, we know that uh, when he stands between Mondo and Togami and says, stop it, we shouldn't fight, he's knocked out by Mondo. So we're talking about Makoto here. Ma Ma Makoto was knocked out by Mondo, who was a... a, a <laughs> Let me not get started on that dude, but yeah, you can probably tell by my tone. You can tell by my tone how I feel about Mondo. But just before that, Sayaka tried to protest the idea of Byakuya going out on his own. And this is what happens. This is basically, good. let's go into what is said. Sayaka says... Uh, wait, hold on a second. That would never been talking about, uh, this is talking about M Monokuma giving the conditions for the killing game and talking about how you got, well, you got to kill each other <laughs> and there's seeds of distrust. Like the game was going to be called originally sown between the group, sown, sown among the group. Sayaka was provoked by Bia well, I think it was Biakuya. It was Biakuya or Celeste, one of those two. I think it was I think it was Biakuya. It's talking about how this could actually happen. They could actually kill each other. And then Saika says, wait, hold on a second, that would never and like, you know, Biakuya was like, I don't trust any of you. You know, he's basically on his high horse and he's like, I I'm gonna watch my back around you guys. Any one of you could want to kill me. Who's to say that one of you doesn't want to escape that badly? And then when Saika tries to, tries to, uh, not affirm, but disclaim this, tries to de uh, deny that this would happen, Yakuya says, don't bother saying it couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. That's why you all seized up with fear when that graduation rule was made clear to you. Am I wrong? And then Saika goes, but, so I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for me. And so what we're basically seeing here is that if Sayaka really cared, like if she really believed in her own convictions, and <laughs> when I say her own convictions, I mean convictions that were more like Makoto's, like actual faith in other people, right? Like if she didn't have a life that made her cynical, if she didn't have a life that made her think that people might actually try to kill her, just not, not for any particular reason, like she's famous or whatever, but just in general, other people might actually try to kill her. If she didn't have these seeds of distrust already within her personality, then she probably wouldn't have gone, but, but she probably would have given an actual counter to what Byakuya was saying, or at least tried to BS one, but she knew that Byakuya was right, or it was right. She knew that Byakuya had a point because, well, she felt the same way. She was just in denial. And when she had to confront that out loud, she couldn't. 
She couldn't like straight up say, no, you're wrong because she believed it, but she couldn't say, well, I, I believe you. I, I definitely believe you. And so she sort of like stumbled and tried to say something, but the truth came out, right? The truth through implication came out that yes, she does believe him because she didn't speak out against him. And, and then Bayaki just said, so I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for me. And then at that point, nothing else, nothing else, because, well, that's the same as her. She would be acting in accordance with what she thinks is best for her. And then Makoto goes and gets punched. And then that changes, uh, changes Saika's outlook on everything, basically, on everything in that situation. She says, anyway, I'm really glad that I know somebody here talking to you has made me feel a lot better about this. You're amazing, Makoto. And so when she says better about all this, she says better about all this in terms of th what Monokuma just said. They're, first of all, they're chatting with each other. Second, the premise is that they have to kill each other to escape. So if she weren't feeling good about this at all, then she didn't feel good about her chances of, of survival, meaning she didn't feel good about her chances of having other people not try to kill her and or not wanting to be tempted to do the same. And then Makoto gets on his, you know, his humble steed and he says, he's nothing compared to all you ultimates or, or whatever he says. And then, and then she says, you're the one that helped me find my courage again. Not any of those ultimate, so-called ultimate students. Notice the way she says that is in quotation marks. So she emphasizes the ultimates to emphasize that the ultimate students really don't matter to her. She doesn't really think much of them in terms of morality, let alone what they can actually do. What matters to her is a person's heart, and that is something she can only see as evidently good in Makoto. And this is something a lot of people don't get about her character. People don't get the dark side of Sayaka, which is not to say like she's a, like Celeste. <laughs> like I'm not talking about appearance rise either. I'm talking about actions. She's not like most of these people in this game, the first game, are jackasses. Like they're just straight up jackasses. Saika's not a jackass, but she's extremely neutral. She's, she's extremely self preservating or self preserving. She is a, I almost want to say a loner. She will talk to you, yes, but anything that's serious, she wants to hit well as of this point. Anything that's serious, she is too careful to try and not handle it on her own first. And then that, that, of course, dies out pretty quickly because of Makoto. But the point is that this was this was her personality for, well, it, it still bleeds through as the game goes through, obviously, right? Because of what eventually happens with her downfall. She eventually makes some bad choices based on her cynicism. But for most of the, well, with like the backstory, everything from like their, their time in middle school all the way back before that, before up until, or before back until, she was first trying out, first trying to be an idol. Maybe even before that, she had seeds of cynicism that did blossom once she was full on that track to become an idol. So you can see right now that there are different layers of development here. None of this stuff directly has anything to do with well, what I just talked about doesn't directly have anything to do with her her backstory before the cynicism doesn't have anything directly to do with her love for her position and wanting to affect positive change in people as an idol choosing Leon because he has the same motivations uh, that are genuine and heartfelt of wanting to be a vocalist regardless of her cynicism. None of this stuff right here that I just showed to you has anything to do with her um, her feelings of guilt over that. Doesn't have anything to do with her fear of losing relevance, or of losing time. Doesn't have anything to do with her love for her group. Doesn't have anything to do with her fear of being disliked. It doesn't have anything to, of, of fearing she can't outmaneuver Monokuma, which is what actually leads to her plan. That's the final straw doesn't have any uh, nothing to do with her her regretting her plan and 
when I say that, I'm not referring to the Leon bit where she writes his name on the wall. I'm referring to when she's talking to Makoto right before Makoto leaves that last time. And not only does she not want to leave, evident in her expression and tone, but she says, like, it's nighttime already when the nighttime bell rings. And it's obvious that she doesn't, like, she wanted to spend more time with him. She didn't want to have to go through with that plan. For obvious. I shouldn't even have to explain. Obviously, she did not want to have to go through with that plan, but she felt there was no other way out. And so when I'm talking about layers of death versus layers of, uh, well, anything else, when I'm talking about layers of death, I'm talking about things that you cannot relate to one another, not directly at least. You can't say that Sayaka's growing up as an idol is the same as her fearing that Monokuma would kill her. Those are two different things. Even though they're two different things, though, they are not two different factors because these both shaped her personality immensely. One of them sort of caused her death. But then in in addition to layers, and and, uh, you could also say there could be like tiers of character development, tiers of character death. In addition to the layers slash tiers, I also have something called shifts and jumps. Now, those are easier. The shifts are just, you take a character from one start of their arc. A character can have multiple arcs, but one start of one arc to the end of one arc. How do they change overall? Jumps, how much a character changes within a certain period. So Sayaka's entire arc, per se, is that entire chapter of, of the first game. And by the way, I don't consider the anime at all, basically. I don't really care about the The only thing good to come out the anime, in my opinion, was Natsumi and the student council. <laughs> That's it. I'm sorry if you if you like the anime. I don't I don't hate it, but I just don't really care for it. But the first game, just the first game, you take, for example, a jump in Saika's character, you'll have well, the shift would be her entire arc, like that one arc, how she changed from the start of that to the end. Or you could say, if you want to go and include the, the not brainwashing, that's the, the third game, the, um, the memory wiping. If you want to include that part, you could say it is from basically her entire shift is from basically when she was a kid, when she was a little kid, to the cynicism of her becoming an act, uh, a famous idolist, or you could say it was from when she first like was growing up as a little kid to when the end of the, the game, the end of her appearance in the game, when she died. That would be her entire shift, including the memory wiping. I hope my voice isn't too annoying. It sounds annoying to me. But then you have the jumps. The jumps is, where the jumps are, how she changes per any certain period. Any certain period, any certain scene. So again, you could have just as she changed from being a kid, as she changed from being a a sad, hapless kid to suddenly having an aspiration to become an idol. That is one jump. That is one period in her life. Before we even get into the practice of her training to become an idol, before we get into all the pitfalls that she encountered there and everything after that, that cascaded from her idol adventure. You could also get into, like, for example, the jumps, her idol adventure. Tuh, everything that happened there. She did a lot of different the bad things, but she also met Makoto there. And she had a different outlook on certain aspects of life because of Makoto. You could also say... Well, she changed a lot during her time in the actual game. And so that's a lot of different jumps there. Now, one, I would consecra- I would, uh, I would classify the first one, the developmental layers, as developmental levels. I could also say that. So, for example, Saika, though I just named more than five levels, I tend to stop at five because only two characters in fiction that I've seen 
have five levels of death, have five layers. Uh, that's Sayaka and Izumi Yakazawa from another. Sayaka would be a, a five development level character or a five level character or five layer character. Uh, the second one, the shifts and jumps, you can classify that. Uh, you can classify that as uh, progressive development ranges or sequences. And this is why, or a way to say it would be like in, in, in practical, in a practical sense, in terms of sequences, Sayaka ranges from this type of character to this type of character during such and so part of her arc. Or for the jumps, that's a shift. You could say Sayaka has X degrees of death at one part of a scene, at the start of a scene, at the start of a period, and then she jumps by X degrees by whatever next part of the period, by whatever next part of the scene. Obviously, you can tell how the shifts and jumps are much more shaky in terms of being tenable, in terms of being defensible in an argument, because who's to say when a character's arc starts or ends or when one period of a character's development starts or ends or continues from another? It's too hard to say. That is subjective. You can sometimes. You can. It doesn't mean that there's going to be a consensus on it, but you could say, like, for example, Sayaka decided when she was seeing the idols on the TV at that moment, she decided she wanted to be one. You could say that. What the hell was that? You could you could say that when she uh, when she became uh, uh, I, won't, I don't. Well, I guess yes. Infatuated with Makoto, that's a different degree of development, but. First of all, that's only two things we picked out in her entire narrative, right? She has a much bigger role in the narrative than just those two snippets of her life. Second of all, not everybody would agree with that. They might say, well, Sayaka didn't change the, the moment she saw Makoto. Maybe she changed um, right after that, when she talked to Makoto right after that. Or something more believable she didn't change as soon as she saw those idols on TV. As she said it in her in her recounting that flashback to Makoto, it was over time as she saw the idols on TV, right? Like once in a while, she would see the idols on TV. She would always tune in. And then over time, she would become that type of person who wanted to be like those idols she saw. That's when the inspiration came gradually. So there's not a specific stop and start point that you can choose from. And so it's much harder to find a consensus. That's why I always use my layers of development when I do my tier lists. When I'm talking about Sayaka here, I'm trying to brighten this down. There's no real sense in having it up. When I talk about Sayaka here, I talk about five layers of development. This is why she's my favorite character in fiction. This is why she's, and I don't really, like my favorites, that is subjective. It's only some characters that are, are more complex written than, other, than others that I have as my favorite. But in this case, that's just simply put. I don't like Sayaka as a person. I would not want to be like her best friend or anything. I would not want to like marry her. But in terms of how well she is written, that coincides with her being my favorite. She has five layers of death. She's a five layer character. And that is nothing that anybody can compare to that I've seen except for Izumi Yakazawa. Now let's look at another character from Dango Empa just for example. Let's look at um, Kiri Giri. When I had my tier list, which I should probably, I can probably put it up. For some reason, I wasn't able to find the actual tier list, but I did make a video on it on my YouTube channel. So if you ever want to check it out, well, first I can go ahead and show you the, go ahead and put the tier list up. And then I will also put what up, the, uh, Sayaka Mizuno, if you if you care, <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't care, but if you do care, it, it has had a lot of downloads. Unfortunately, I lost my original copy, so since I lost my original copy, I don't know exactly how many downloads it has. But the new one that you can't find in the searches because it only shows the old one because Google sucks. Even still, the new one has all like almost three hundred downloads, and it has. A few thousand views so it's pretty popular it's, it's nowhere near as popular as the original version 
but this is the more complete version. And then the, the tier list, if I can go to the start of it, I got Sayaka here. Okay, so it only shows that, oh no, it does show everybody. Okay, I could actually take a picture of this and put this at the, as like my main screen, but whatever, you see it right here. So you see Sayaka at the top. She's the S plus character. Why is she the S plus character? Well, because no one compares to her. <laughs> Kayane was, I was hoping she would be around there. She only has like four layers of development, four and a half. Not exactly Saika's level, but then again, Saika has more than five, so fuck it. Uh, but let's compare to somebody who's who's much easier to look into. You have Ko uh, Kokichi there. You got Junko, the fake Junko, Mukuro, SS. Then you, I have right after that, I have you. Hiyoko, Byakuya, Chiaki, Mahiru, Angie. It's been ever since I played these damn games. What's his freaking name? I know his last name. It's, it's Saitama, right? What's his What's his first name? Damn, I suck. Mikan, Gary, Gary, and Maki. <laughs> what's his damn name? <laughs> Wait, it's down here in the list. Shuichi, Shuichi Saitama. Damn. By the way, this list was made in 2019, back when I actually knew about this series. So my views on the characters are much more in depth if you watch the tier list, which I can also put in the chat, just in case you or anybody else would want to see it. I don't know why I didn't just show the damn thing on YouTube from my screen. That would have been much easier than trying to find a picture. Anyhow, let's look at a character who is of the A tier, but not on Sayaka's level. So could Kiri Giri, because they always get compared. And and first of all, I want to say this. Um, if you don't agree, that's fine, but this is just a fact. Okay. Because I used to get flamed back when I actually posted on the Dagamumpa subreddit. Um, I said some, to some, in response to someone's Nye Giri, uh, that's when you put Makoto and Kiri Giri right together. I responded to someone's Nye Giri Dojin. They made a comic. And I said, that's real nice. Even though that the canon pairing is Sayaka and Makoto, I really like this. And it's like, it makes you want to look more into what could have been with Kiri Giri and Makoto. And I got a shitload of down votes because <laughs> you really look well, couple, you want well, couple, you wanted the right couple, the right one is Gary Gary and Psycho. You really want that, so we're gonna neg you to hell. Because they were freaking beeps. Now I don't care if if you or anybody else likes Kiri Gary and Makoto as a pairing. I know as a matter of fact, I know and um damn this cough drop, sorry. I know as a matter of fact that Kiri Gary and Makoto is now the canon pairing. But back then, back then I was talking about as it was back then, like in like the first game, <laughs> it was not Kirigiri and Makoto. As a matter of fact, Kirigiri was antagonistic toward Makoto for most of the game. It was up until chapter five where she changed her position with Makoto. Right in chapter five, actually, well, I'm wrong. Chapter six, like the start of chapter six, like or, or the very end of chapter five, after he was dug out of that trash area, when she got his ass dumped there. And yes, yeah, she did give him an out by telling him about the Monokuma key so that she could have gotten executed if he really wanted to do that. But she did put him in the position to where he had to choose between their lives that he didn't really care that much. Shut the fuck up. Damn. And um, moreover, he got her beaten. Uh, she got him beaten up by having her, him sneak around while she got to be covert and basically draw attention to himself and get knocked out by Junko and almost killed by Junko. So that's not love. <laughs> okay. The second of all, Makoto still had Sayaka on the brain until like basically the end of the game and not Kirigiri. Right, they they were not friends like that at the end of the game. Or they were not friends. They were not lovers like that at the end of the game. Not until the anime where that changed. So, and and in the anime, he got he had to get over his feelings of Sayaka before Kirigiri could come into play. And so, 
what all that is to say is that if you like Naya Giri, I don't begrudge you or anybody for that. I do not care. I don't care about shippings in general. As you can see, every character on this list is seems like completely randomized. It is not. Instead, I group these characters based on how well I believe they are written. And what that means is how many layers of depth they have. The only objective metric that I found for measuring how well a character is written. I do not care about subjective lookings at a character. Otherwise, people like... Um, who do I have here? Uh, Izuru would be at like S. Because I just like to see him beat up the anime Mukuro. He was a badass. Gundam would be at S. Or a, a whole bunch of characters would be at S or A. I even like the fat Biakia. What the hell? What's going on here? I, I like those guys. Right? They're funny. They're cool. Uh, I like the, the tennis dude whose name I forgot. <laughs> those, those guys are cool. Um, but I still have to look at it. Damn, another slow frame. I still have to look at it objectively. And as far as it goes with the relationship factor of things, Sayaka and Makoto was the canon parent. Sayaka loved Makoto until basically that's no longer clear. And Makoto loved Sayaka even after that. He had to come to terms with things about Sayaka, but he still loved Sayaka. They were still, or I'll put it this way. They were the only canon parent. What that means is they were in, in the first game in terms of being lovers. That What that means is they were the only pairing that actually was involved in a relationship or that actually had romantic feelings for each other. They were involved with, with each other right before the game started, right before they lost their memories, fly. They were hanging out with each other as a couple. And then... Well, right after the game started, they had feelings for each other that they agreed to hold off on for them to escape and not die first. Fly, please move. And get the fuck out of here. I'm not sweating. And no other character you can say this for. They were friendships. They were very strong friendships in the first game. But no romance like that besides Sayaka and Makoto. So that's all I said. And the nerds still attacked me. They still got butt hurt. I don't really care. But this is the same premise that my tier list is based on. It's based on objectivity. So there's a lot of motherfuckers who I do not like and I can't stand, as a matter of fact, who are high ranking here. For example, Mikan. For example, um, Maki. Damn. <laughs> Still can't believe I got Maki's ass up here. Um, for example, Ishimaru. I don't really like Mew either until like the very last couple scenes she had. I, I didn't like Mew at all. She was disgusting. Her sprites were disgusting. Her voice was kind of annoying, but she has a lot of death. But all that's to just give me give me some uh, ethos, some credibility. Let me look right now in a comparison before my battery dies in T minus eight minutes. Between Sayaka and, and Kirigiri. Matter of fact, I'm going to do this real fast. Do it in about four minutes. And if you want me to... Do, yes, I know my, my battery's going to die. I know I'm about to shut off. And if you want me to um do any more of this stuff, then let me know. Um, I don't even know how subscribing works on Reddit. But I'll probably find out if anybody cares. And then I'll be convinced to do this as more than just a test out for my connection. Uh, Kiri Giri, everything she revolves around is like based on her father. Every single thing. That's not to say she has only one layer of death. She does have shifts and jumps. She does have something with Makoto, but pretty much everything and her, trying to find out herself, her own talent, but pretty much everything else that's major in her character revolves around her father. What that means is from before the game started, when she was trying to track her father down because he was, a, I guess you could say, a deadbeat, not really, who left the house and like abandoned the family, didn't want to be a detective, abandoned her, all that shit. She was salty. She wanted to find him. She wanted to apply to be a detective, even though she wasn't technically qualified to be an ultimate level detective because there are better detectives her age out there but she he's the headmaster so she she got let in because <laughs> her father's jen gary gary the headmaster 
I'm not trying to like disparage her or anything. I'm not trying to insult her, but that's just how it was. She had to like petition to be let in. It just goes to show the ultimate is not necessarily the best. Just like the ultimate Yakuza is not the best Yakuza. It was Fuyuhiko's sister who was the best Yakuza. She just gave it up to him on purpose so that she could follow him as the ultimate little sister because she's such a, a fucking suck up. But anyway, the, this is getting a sidetrack. The, the point is a lot of the stuff revolved around her, her father, around daddy. Everything with Makoto... She was doing, like, all the torturing of Makoto, she was doing to try and find information about, about her father. Everything regarding snooping around her father. She first came to that school because of her father. When she got her memories wiped, she remembered nothing about anything except that she was here to look for the headmaster, who she found out later was her father. So that's, it's, it's a little bit less nuanced right it's it's pretty much one section that's extremely extremely what's the way to put this without being insulting uh set set in stone not all in her backstory a whole bunch of changes she wanted this she found this out suddenly she had a different outlook on life suddenly some other person stumbled into her life things changed but she still maintains that cynicism that's different my computer's about to die. So I'm probably going to cut this off for the next couple seconds or the computer's going to cut off for it. I'll let the computer die and whatever. You'll know when I'm done. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> it's, it's different. It's, it's less in depth what Kirigiri has compared to Saika. Everything with Makoto, she was using that guy as a tool until basically he inspired her after. Like he, he, she viewed him as like a worthy sub-accomplice, like below her. Uh, but was my fucking hands below her as he started to prove himself still to try and find out her father still an accomplice in that he was a lackey basically to her no real feelings for that guy that shaped her development at all from the father shit until basically the end of the game where she tried to get him killed and where she like already found out pretty much about her father more or less pretty much anything she wanted to find out she found out the rest, like, right there in chapter six, not that long after. The game is only, like, a week long, if that. And so, by the point she changes because of Makoto, the game is over. And again, I don't care about the anime. I'm only talking about the games in the tier list, by the way. I'm only talking about the games. Only the main three games, not even Ultimate Despair Girls. So it's less. It's just, it's less. Sayaka, her view of Makoto changes, and it eventually devolves into her setting Makoto up. We don't know whether she's trying to get him killed or not. She, obviously not. She didn't know about the rules, uh, like the class trial. She didn't know about that. But she lost faith in him because he was seeming to be, over time, someone who was going to make up stuff about being able to save her that he didn't really buy because he liked her like that. And she saw that. Now, she still wanted him in terms of wanting to be close to him. But practicality won out in the end and so there was a not a duality but a and what's the word i'm looking for an ambivalence in terms of her mindset with him that even up until the end we don't know how she was trying to act with him now we can reason it out that she knew that she was saving him because obviously she knew she was saving him but her intentions per se her direct most primary intentions we do not know that's death it's too much to just re-look at and say this is what it is I got a feeling I'm going to cut off at any second now. <laughs> what the hell was that right there? Oh, that's the trash, guys. Right behind me because I'm raw. I think I might as well stop it here. I mean, that's, that's basically it. That's, that's all I really have to say. Unless I like, if you want to see the rest of the tier list, juke, you can. Because I go over every character in those three games with a lot of depth. Except for Saika. I probably went into Saika more deaf here than in the... But if you want to look at Saika, you got to read the, tier list, uh, the, the thesis. Because that... Nothing else can be said about her character that isn't in that thesis. Trust me. Everything that's there is to say is going to be in the thesis. Anyhow, if you enjoyed it, thank you. Thank you nonetheless for sticking around the entire time. All these hand motions is building up strength in my hands. And I feel like I can get off these splints soon. Please check out my content on YouTube. 
and uh, let me know if there's anything else that you want me to do. My email is the same, Rebel of Dunu or Dunu. And if you have any requests or you want to live with me, you want to talk to me about anything or chat or just have me look at something, recommend something to me. I'm free for that too. Thanks, man.